Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is my dome mechanism pretty much complete. I haven't put it in my dome obviously because I haven't finished my dome. I just started uh, getting it ready to add servos and clean it up and paint it, or not paint it, but uh, sand it down and all that. So that'll be next, but uh, this took it has taken quite a while to, to finish off. So here's my um, control board. It's got a Polo Maestro 24 channel relay controller there. And then I got a couple motor drivers here, one on the other side and a couple regulators down here. On the back of it, I've got some relays that operate a couple different things on here that uh, the Pololu couldn't do because of power issues. And then I've got uh, my different mechanisms. I've got my periscope, my Sabre scanner, uh, motivator, and then the zapper. So it's just on this rotisserie right now. I can turn it around, show you what it looks like. Um, but I will activate it here for you, and I've just got a uh, Nano or a, uh, Uno there hooked up to um, my Xbox 360, and I can just activate one switch that will operate all of these devices in sequence. So I'll just show you how that uh, how that looks. So here we'll start off with uh, the Periscope. So it turns on some LEDs, and I've got some sound effects coming through uh, the speaker here with an amplifier underneath it. Next we have Luke's Saber. No flashy lights here, just the saber coming up. You can take this out if you want. Um, and sound effects. Uh, next we have the scanner. And then the motivator. It's got some LEDs up there, which are a little hard to see. Some smoky smoke. And then last but not least, the zapper. Sounds ominous, but it really isn't. Okay, and that's it so far. If you want to check out some of the, uh, the code that I did, uh, just stick around. Otherwise, thanks for watching. All right, let's take a look at uh, the Maestro Control Center. I've got my 24-channel Maestro plugged in. And uh, as you can see on the left screen, I've got this status window open. At the same time, I've got the sequence window open. Let's go back to the first one. And um, I've got uh, 24 channels, so it goes from 0 to 23. And everything I've got here is checked off right now. So I only activate things as needed to make sure that servos aren't like on or anything like that, um, taking power, that that don't need to be. There's three of these boxes here that are already checked because they're connected to relays that click and then activate that particular um, part of the device. So the periscope LEDs have that checked. If I uncheck that right now and activated everything, that would turn on that relay constantly and whatever the the LEDs would be on. So I have to have that checked off, uh, checked, and then zapper LEDs, same thing. And then my smoke is connected to a relay. So there's a check mark there and that just stays on all the time. Uh, some of these are outputs, so you can see, and then some are servos. Um, so I've changed that in um, the channel settings. Some of them have targets that I've set up that I don't want the servo to move beyond or I want it to start up at a certain position so that they're all set in there. 
And um, the way I've set up the devices, the periscope is from zero to four. So basically periscope up is zero, then periscope down, then LEDs on and off, rotating sound, and that's basically it. So if you take a look over on this side, that's sequence zero. So periscope is sequence zero. And um, here is my sequence that I would like to have happen when I select sequence zero in the, in the Padawan script. So um, periscope begin, I always started with a begin and an end, and it just makes sure that everything's zeroed off and starting properly for the next sequence. Um, then I have LEDs on, sound on, sound off. And the reason it goes on and off right away is because this sound lasts for a certain length of time, like 20 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever. So I could just turn it on and turn it off, and the sound will keep happening until it cycles out. Um, then periscope up. Then I've got a bunch of rotates, so it rotates around. And I've timed these all for the sound so that they stay it st stays moving until the sound is finished. And then I instead of rotate five, I put rotate home so I know that it's in the position to go down. And then the periscope goes down, LED shut off, and then we end off with the same pattern right here. Nothing's activated, ready for the next one. Uh, so my scanner is numbers, um, scanner is five all the way down to nine. So scanner up, down, rotate, LEDs, and sound. Then zappers up, down, rotate, arm out, LEDs, sound. Motivator is up, down, LEDs, and smoke, and then sound. And then the saber just has three. It, it just has up, down, and sound. Okay. So my sequence uh, zero is obviously the periscope. Uh, sequence one is the saber, so it's a lot shorter. And then um, my sequence two is the life form scanner. And number three is the motivator. And number four is the zapper. So quite a bit more happening right there. Uh, and then I just, you know, after I made all this, I had to delete everything in my script. And then I just said, copy all sequences to script. And so far, everything's working. So now all I have to do is just use these five different sequences whenever I need to call them up with my button clicks. All right. All right, I'll walk you through some of the changes I did to Matt's original files uh, just to suit my needs here a little bit more. Um, obviously, this whole uh, electronics board is different. I've got that kind of posted in a different video, but I'll just show you the mechanisms in a 3D printed ad adaptation. So. Um, the periscope um, housing I remodeled and I've got room for some magnets here and hopefully the pie panel will fit on top. I'm not really sure how it'll all fit on that thing, if it's going to be the right height or not. But uh, we'll see when we get to that stage. Um, down below, um, for the gears, I've doubled this gear and shrunk the one underneath that it's attached to so that the periscope can actually rotate. Um, a, in a lar lot larger uh, range. And then down below, for the periscope and two other mechanisms, I found that the bushing underneath here that you tighten is um, is just too low and it hits the motor me mechanism. So I had to put a five millimeter adapter piece right in there so that it hits the limit switch a little bit better. And then obviously the internal electronics um, are added and I have that in a different video as well. So that's the periscope for the lightsaber. Um, I really didn't do very much to that. I think in the future I might put some magnets in here so this doesn't flop around too much, but I'm not sure how uh, that'll work once everything's in there. So that one I didn't really do anything to. Okay, so let's flip around here. It's getting stuck, there we go. So for the scanner, I have a metal she, um, screen on here and uh, I did that with drywall um, repair kit and then um, I remodeled this whole shaft here so that um, I can um, have it as one piece and then I made my own LED lights inside there on a little circuit board and then down here same thing I remodeled the gear there and the gear here so that the whole um, scanner can turn in a greater range 
and then I have a five millimeter adapter right down in here for that too. Uh, as far as the motivator goes, um, I built this pump system. So this is just an air pump going to an e-cigarette and then the tube that goes underneath and through. I also made this little uh, adapter here for a voltage regulator so I can put out three volts just to the e-cigarette. And um, I think that's, oh no, then down behind there, I've got an extension piece and I brought the limit switch way up here so that um, it's a lot higher. For my periscope or for my um, zapper, uh, that's all resin printed. I did add a Adafruit and Adafruit um, jewel here just for a microprocessor to run the LEDs. And then for that, I needed this relay here to click on so it'll power it. But I kept the whole gear system because I don't need the zapper to um, to, to turn too much. Too much. So uh, those are the changes that I made to the uh, dome mechanism. And then the last thing is obviously the speaker up here with uh, an amplifier underneath and it all gets plugged into the back of this which is my little soundboard. So those are my changes and uh, I've got some of them on Thingiverse and I'll post a link down below. So if you've enjoyed this I'm happy for you. Uh, if you're making one of these I'm sure it's going to go great and uh, I'd like to thank Matt Zwartz for providing the files for free. I really appreciate that and again thanks for watching and see you next time.